Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rhiannon and today I'm going to be telling you about seven books that will self-destruct in 12 months. So this video is completely inspired by Becca from Becca and the Books. She has done quite a few of these videos now as a way to get her to read some books that she otherwise would have left on her shelves. However, any books that she doesn't manage to read, she will unhaul. So I'm going to be doing that today. I have chosen seven books off of my shelves from my recent unhaul that I wasn't too sure about. I didn't want to commit to getting rid of them, but at the same time, I didn't want them taking up room on my shelves either. So I'm hoping that this video will give me the kick I need to actually prioritise these books get them read, see whether I enjoy them or not, and ultimately see if I will unhaul them. Now out of these seven books, four of them are actually books that I received in subscription boxes. I am currently subscribed to Fairy Loot, and every month I do receive a mystery book in their YA box. Now I love Fairy Loot, don't get me wrong, but sometimes the books in there just aren't for me, or they don't sound like books that I'm particularly going to enjoy. I also for some reason put off reading Fairy Loot books, I don't know why, but I don't think I've read a single book that I received in a Fairy Loot in a about a year now which is crazy to me. So this video is hopefully going to help me prioritise those subscription box books as well because there's no point in me being subscribed to a mystery subscription box and then not reading the books that I get in the box. So the first subscription box book that I have to show you guys today is The Kingdom of Buck by Marie Lu. All I know about this one is that it's a female retelling of Mozart. So our main character Nanel is a female composer in the 18th century. However because she's a female being a composer is forbidden to her. Her, and she will only be able to perform until she reaches a marriageable age. One day though, a mysterious stranger approaches her and kind of promises her everything that she ever wanted. He can make her dreams come true, but of course his help might actually cost her everything. So it does sound quite interesting. I do enjoy a good historical fiction novel, however I'm not particularly invested in composers, I'm not musically gifted at all, and so that is something that I wouldn't particularly want to read about. However, the story itself does sound promising, it sounds magical and whimsical, and that is ultimately why I didn't unhaul it back in December. This is also a short book, so I'm hoping I can fly through it, but ultimately we'll see how I get on with this one and whether I enjoy the historical fiction aspect of it or not. Next up we have Star Daughter by Shveta Thakra, which is a beautiful, beautiful book, but I've just not heard the best things about this, guys, unfortunately, and it just sounds a little bit too young for me at this point in time. So in this one, our main character Sheetal is the daughter of a star but I don't believe that she's ever known her mother and she's kind of had to hide this fact throughout her whole life but one day as she gets closer to her 17th birthday she accidentally burns her father with starlight and it turns out that this injury is one that only a full star can heal. Because of this Sheetal finds herself drawn to the sky to seek the help of one of these stars but she soon realizes that there is more to play here and she has actually been chosen to compete as champion for these stars in a competition to decide the next ruler of this land, or celestial kingdom should I say. So it does sound promising. I've just seen so many reviews of people that didn't quite enjoy this one. They found the writing style quite young and so it has made me a little bit apprehensive to pick this one up. I will say though that this out of all of them is the one that sounds the most interesting to me and has the most potential for me to enjoy. It's just that I'm basing my apprehension off of other people because I obviously don't want to be wasting my time reading books that I'm not going to enjoy. So we'll see with this one. It's the one that has the most promise. It's the one that I think I'm going to enjoy the most out of this stack. But once again, we'll see if I read it and what my thoughts are then. Next up is a chunky book and that is Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. As I mentioned, this one is huge. It is 531 pages and I just don't know if I can dedicate enough time for this book out of my day. I do have so much going on at the minute and I've been in a massive reading slump lately where I found that the only books that I tend to gravitate towards are thrillers. So diving into a new fantasy that is very chunky might not be the best thing for me. But once again, this does sound really intriguing. There's a kind of heist element to it where we do see a group of different characters being put together to complete this heist, which is something I love. I love seeing different characters from different backgrounds come together to help achieve one goal. I like to see the friendship 
friendships that are built, the turmoil that ensues along the way. It's just the size of this one that puts me off. On the top of this one here, it says six fey relics, one daring thief, the score of a lifetime, which definitely draws me in. And so essentially the plot is that there is a fey relic that is split up into six pieces. There is a dark lord that wants to collect all these six pieces. But we have a group of ragtag characters that are thrown together, each for their own personal benefits to stop this dark lord from gaining all the six parts of this relic to ultimately rule the land. This is one that I've also not heard anything about. I don't know whether it's a book that people enjoyed or not, which might be a good thing. I don't think I should necessarily go looking for those reviews because then it will place a seed of doubt in my mind whilst reading the book itself. But this is another one that I do think I'll enjoy when I actually do sit down to read it. I just don't know if I actually will do that in the space of a year. And then the last subscription box book I have is Shielded by Kaylin Flanders. This again has a really nice tagline on the front that says, an ancient evil, a broken kingdom, and one girl with a secret to save the world. In this book, we have an ongoing war that is tearing apart two nations and our main character Jenna believes that she would be a valuable asset on the battlefield. However, her father does of course have other plans for her as he is looking for an alliance with the neighbouring kingdom by marrying off his daughter to gain supplies for this war. But on her way to reach her betrothed, Jenna's caravan is ambushed and she soon learns that the threat is so much worse than it first seemed and she must decide if revealing a dangerous secret is worth the cost before it's too late for her and her kingdom. Kingdom. I'm just not sure about this one guys. I feel like there are elements in this that I could like However, again, I haven't seen the best reviews for this Especially by people that I trust and go to regularly for book recommendations So I'm definitely a bit nervous diving into this one. However, who doesn't love a badass female character? I am clinging on to the fact that this is going to be very empowering that she is going to kind of take her destiny into her own Hands and do what's best for her kingdom that way So these are the four subscription box books that I'm going to be focusing focusing on in this round of books will self-destruct. Please do let me know if you've read any of these and also leave your thoughts on them down below if you have. That will definitely sway me in which order to read these because I do trust your guys' opinions. And then the first of the three books that aren't subscription box books is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. All I know about this one is that it's a sci-fi retelling of Cinderella and that it's been 200 years since Cinderella found her prince and had her happily ever after but unfortunately for the people in this community the fairy tale is finished. It says here, now teen girls are required to appear at the annual ball, where the men of the kingdom select wives based on a girl's display of finery. If a suitable match is not found, the girls not chosen are never heard from again. 16 year old Sophia would much rather marry Erin, her childhood best friend, than parade in front of suitors. At the ball, Sophia makes the desperate decision to flee and finds herself hiding in Cinderella's mausoleum. There she meets Constance, the last known descendants of Cinderella and her stepsisters. Together they vow to bring down the king once and for all, and in the process they learn that there's more to Cinderella's story than they ever knew. This fresh take on a classic tale will make readers question what they've always been told about happily ever after and root for girls to break down the constructs of the world around them. See now I'm in two minds because that sounds again like an empowering female story revolving around a fairy tale that I absolutely adore and I think I am just apprehensive because I love the original tale and I don't want anything else to kind of taint that. This book is beautiful though. I feel like it is going to be an important story. It's going to give a lot of representation and so that that is why I couldn't unhaul it and decide to put it in this self-destruct pile instead. The next book I have is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. This is here because I read Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller and I wasn't massively impressed. I enjoyed the story but it was a bit simplistic and I just was left wanting more but I couldn't get rid of this one because it is inspired by Norse mythology which if you guys don't know I am a mythology nerd. I absolutely love learning about different countries mythologies and history and tales and the Vikings are definitely a group that are so interesting to me. Now that I'm reading the synopsis though, it actually sounds so good. It says, how do you kill a god? As her father's chosen heir, 18 year old Rosmira has trained her whole life to become a warrior and lead her village. But when her coming of age trial is sabotaged and she fails the test, her father banishes her to the monster filled wilderness with an impossible quest. To win back her honor, she must kill the oppressive god who claims tribute from villages each year or die trying. That actually sounds really good now and I'm hoping I can pick it up pretty soon because it's also quite short. So hopefully this is one that I can pick up and fly through and kind of get the ball rolling with this TBR. So an unexpected one in this pile, but I am glad that it's in here because it will force me to sit down and prioritize it. And then we have finally reached the last book, which is The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. Now this was marketed as being a Les Mis retelling in space, which is essentially why I bought this book. I love Les Mis. It's one of my
my favourite ever plays. I'm also one that really enjoyed the film as well. I saw it like six times in the cinema when it first came out, so you can bet that I was excited about this one. However, when it got here, the excitement kind of died down, especially as I started seeing some negative reviews. It does essentially follow the timeline and plot of Les Mis, from what I can gather, but I believe that the citizens of Paris have gathered into guilds of thieves and assassins, and that's where the title comes in because they are known as the Court of Miracles. So in this one we are focusing more on Eponine. Her father Thenardier sells her sister to the Guild of Flesh, which definitely doesn't sound very nice, and she makes a promise to do everything in her power to get her sister back. And it says here, Eponine becomes perhaps the greatest thief the court has ever known, finding a place among them and gaining another sister, Cosette. But she has never forgotten the promise she made, and if she's to have any hope of saving one sister, she will have to betray the other. So it sounds like there's going to be quite a lot going on. Instead of a love triangle, we have a kind of sister triangle, which should be an interesting dynamic to follow. But for some reason, I'm just not drawn to it, and I'm not sure if I'll actually get around to reading this one. Fingers crossed that I do, because I would love to read all these books and see what I actually think of them. But realistically, I've only read seven books so far this year. Normally, I'd be on about 20 by now. I'm in a massive reading slump, and I just don't know if I will prioritise the books in this TBR. So the timer has started for these books. They have 12 months to stay on my shelves. What do you guys think? Do you think I will enjoy all of these? Are there some that you think I shouldn't read or wouldn't like if I read? And are there some that you think are going to be new favourites for me? Please do let me know in the comments. If you've made it this far into the video, please do leave me a timer emoji down below. That can either be a clock or an hourglass. Anything that you feel like conveys time or rather time running out for these books. I always say it at the end of these videos, but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does make my day. It's honestly crazy to me that people enjoy my videos enough to watch it all the way through and it truly does mean the world to me. So if you are still here, please go ahead and do that. Whilst you're down there, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it from me today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see which books we'll be getting unhauled in 12 months. Goodbye!